How can you possibly have your jacket on? It is about 3,000 degrees in this house. I like it. How can you be more, or like, cold? I'm not. Just like, covered. Just... It's actually hot, though. Like, I'm, I'm warm, but maybe it's just... It's warmer out here with in all the, the kitchen. sunlight you let in. Yeah, I do. Which... I mean, the lighting is up in the air, trying to film here in the kitchen, but with that door open, I look fantastic <laughs> washed out from the side. There are neighborhood kids outside playing and screaming. I'm very glad they're having a good time, but I just want to FYI, if you hear shouting and screaming in this video, it's just the neighbors. Hi, everybody. Today, I thought we would make dinner together. So I want to share a recipe with you that I found on Pinterest and that we love. Do you love this recipe? Awesome, because I like love it and I just kind of assume that if I love it, you love it. So this is a butternut squash and black bean enchilada skillet. It's a mouthful. It's from ambitiouskitchen.com. I like it so much. This is how serious I am about it. Not only did I save it on Pinterest, but I printed off the recipe. I took the paper and the ink to print this and put it in plastic and I keep it in my recipe binder. So I'm gonna share the ingredients with you and I'm also gonna share how I make it um, and I kind of tweak it. This is definitely a tweakable recipe. So feel free to add some things, leave some things out, mix it up, whatever suits you best. I certainly do every time I make it. I make a few little adjustments here or there. So uh, let's get started. So here's my recipe and we're going to need olive oil, black beans, garlic, a butternut squash, onion, I'm using rice, but I'll show you that the original recipe does not call for white rice, cheese, we have salt and pepper, chili powder, cumin, and enchilada sauce mix. The original recipe here calls for half of a jalapeno, which I don't have on hand, and since nobody's taking any extra trips to the store, um, we are not going to bother going to get it. Also, it's a little spicy for me whenever we use the jalapeno, so I'm happy to leave that out this time. And it also calls for eight yellow corn tortillas cut into strips. So sometimes I have those on hand, sometimes I don't. Right now I don't. So in general, if you wanna leave those out, like automatically you can make this a lower carb dish. I'm okay with having some carbs and I'm using white rice because I already had this in the fridge as leftovers from the other day. So I figured this would be a good way to use them up. Otherwise, if I didn't have this white rice, I was actually thinking of using quinoa, which I have in the pantry. I don't have Colby Jack cheese, and I only have a little bit of Mexican uh, cheese, like there's my Mexican cheese. I also have this jalapeno cheese. I can, I can tolerate that. That's not too spicy, as long as I don't like go overboard on it. And then I also have some sharp cheddar, so I am just using a mix of whatever cheeses I had in the fridge. As you can see, and of course I'll link to the site for the recipe and everything down below, but you can kind of change this up however you want. You can make it a little bit healthier if you leave some things out. Uh, you can also add some, maybe some more veggies. I might actually add a little bit of frozen corn if I have some in the freezer. Yeah, I think I do, so I might do that. So we have some options. So first let's cut up our onion. I'm actually only going to use half of an onion. I had um, half in, in the fridge, I didn't realize, I just found it. So I'm gonna use this first before I cut into that new onion that I've got. We're going to put this in a trusty old mincer. Already feel the onions in my eyeballs. I don't care for it. Oh, and now I'm all teary. Next, we're gonna chop up our butternut squash. I know some people have good luck um, or enough skill to peel their squash with a vegetable peeler. Typically, I just cut the skin off of mine, but I will try using the peeler tonight. I like the idea of using the peeler because I think I use, I mean, I waste less squash than I do if I cut the skin off. But then it's really hard around things like the edge here. It's hard to get that skin off. So sometimes I think you can peel and other times I think you should just chop. Okay, now I'll take a spoon and scoop out the seeds. Oh, 
Alrighty, I've got our enchilada sauce starting in the back of the stove. Here is our pan. The olive oil has heated up. I think our pan's pretty darn hot. So I'm going to add our onions first. Now I'm going to add the garlic. The recipe calls for three cloves. Um, I'm going to do about two because you know I don't ha since I don't have a full onion, um, and I'm also going to save a portion of my butternut squash for another meal. So I'm probably I'm I really don't think I'm doing like a full recipe of this, but fairly close. I just feel like I could save about a quarter of that butternut squash and roast it for another meal later this week. So that's why I just held a little bit of it back and so I'm okay if I don't do a full recipe of this for my husband and I tonight. This would also be the point where you add the jalapeno and let the three of them cook together but since I'm omitting jalapeno I don't have to worry about that. Okay that's been cooking up just for a few minutes so now we're going to add the squash. I need a smidge more olive oil in here. Yeah let's add just a little more. Now we're going to add our cumin and our chili powder. The full recipe calls for one teaspoon of each. I will do a little bit less than that. We're also going to add our salt and pepper at this point. Now we're going to give this a good mix and let it cook for 10 to 13 minutes until the squash softens up. I put the lid on the pan with the squash at this point because I want the squash really to soften up um, without hopefully burning any of the garlic that's in there. You could also though cook the squash ahead of time, which I've done before. So I cube it up, some, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But when I feel like doing that, I cube it up and I brown it a little bit in a cast iron pan, uh, like a cast iron skillet on the stove top. And then that way when we get to this point in the recipe, it's already softened up a bit and it doesn't need to cook as long. And therefore I don't have to worry about stuff burning on the bottom of the pan. So that is an option if you wanna do that as well. Okay, so it just has about a minute left to cook under here. Um, I Honestly, I'm not sure if it's even as soft as I would like it normally. But things are sticking to the bottom of the pan, getting brown down there. See, yeah, so I always want to be careful because I don't want anything to burn. Brown is okay, burned is not. Yeah, that's still too firm. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're lowering the heat again and keeping the lid on and I'm going to let it go for a few more minutes. Okay, these are now what I'd call fork tender. Um, they're not mushy, but you can actually poke them with the fork and they feel soft. So at this point, I'm going to add um, some freezer corn, not in the original recipe, but I'm going to add some since I have some. We also add our black beans at this point. And even though I might not technically be doing one full recipe, I'm still going to add a full 15 ounce can of black beans. We're also adding our enchilada sauce now. This uh, you can buy in a can, as I've learned since making this recipe, you can buy it in a can or you can buy a mix in a packet, which is what I did. I didn't have a full packet, so I kind of zhuzhed it up as best as I can. It's gotten really thick. Um, I, I made some of my own tweaks to it to make it more since I didn't have a full, a full packet. So this is thicker than you'd usually see um, and you also wouldn't see I mean, if you use the packet stuff like I did, it wouldn't have like salsa in it. I was trying to find something with tomatoes and we had some salsa left in the fridge. So I added a little salsa and you add some water to the powdered mix also. Figure, listen, whatever I gotta do to make it work, I'm gonna make it work. Now we add some cheese. I eyeball it on the cheese. I'm, I'm an over cheeser. I'm a big cheese fan. You really can't have too much cheese in my book, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm adding some of the jalapeno cheese that I already had in the fridge opened. I'm gonna add the rest of this Mexican style cheese that I had also. We're just gonna sprinkle that all in. 
Now we stir this up with the cheese in there to get it all mixed in and then we let it cook for just a couple of minutes. Oh, I forgot, I forgot our rice. Okay, we're adding some of this white rice also. How could I forget? Probably because it's a new addition for me. Yeah, let's add a little bit more. I guess this was kind of a lot to, if I had added all this white rice in. So we'll just do some white rice. There, and then I still have a little bit left over. Now we're sprinkling some cheese right over the top. I'm not gonna mix this cheese in. And look, I'm using up another bag of cheese that was in the fridge, awesome. The heat's off here on the stove, so now I'm actually gonna put this in the oven and pop it under the broiler. The recipe says to put that under the broiler for three to five minutes. I think I'm just gonna do three because I don't love and trust our oven and I don't trust our broiler, so it just makes me nervous. Our, our oven has a lot of power failures and I just don't love putting it even past like a certain temperature. And if nothing has a power failure or starts on fire in there, maybe I'll give it a little more time. Normally, if I don't feel like using the broiler, then I will just put it in the oven at like 375 or 400 so the cheese on top melts. I don't try necessarily to get it to brown at that point. I just want the cheese to get melty on top. So that's if I'm not using the broiler. It's fresh out of the oven. It is so hot. Um, it just is starting to brown just a hint on the cheese. And honestly, I am, I'm perfectly fine with how much it's melted right now. You could let it go longer and get more brown like the recipe says if you want to. So this smells good. It looks good. It is just way too hot to eat, so I will be back in a little bit after this is cooled so I can actually try some. All right, now it's time to dish some up. I have my bowl right here, and I'll just take some from this side. I think that if I take it out of here, now that it's sat for a couple of minutes, if I take it out and put it in my bowl, maybe it will cool off faster. Oh, look at that steam. It is still too warm to try. Now I at least have little portion for me that can start cooling again. So this is how I like to do mine. I know this does not look super appetizing once I add the sour cream, but I like my sour cream thoroughly mixed in there. You can just make it look a little nicer and dollop some on the top if you like. This is also when you can add your cilantro or any other topping that you'd like. Okay, so I'm gonna try it like I don't know that I love this recipe, but let me take a bite anyway, since I went through all this hard work and I am hungry. Oh my goodness, it is so good. And I'm especially happy because even though my husband loves spicy things and would have appreciated the jalapeno in here, I do not. So this is not too spicy for me, even though we added some chili powder. It absolutely needs the chili powder and the cumin. And then the enchilada sauce also has spices in that. So you need those seasonings. If you need to kick it up a little bit and add more or even something hotter, feel free to do that. But this works for me as a person who does not love spicy stuff. The squash is not too soft, it did not get mushy, but it cooked like perfectly. I really like this consistency. So you don't want mushy squash, but you want it to be nice and soft. I put in plenty of cheese. I've been loving black beans more and more. Um, it is good with the rice. You know, rice is, I mean, obviously super versatile. So the rice works in here as a replacement tonight for the corn tortillas that I didn't have. This is just so good. So tweakable, delicious, on the healthy side, and you can make it healthier if you'd like. And of course, I will have all the info and link to this recipe down below and where I found it exactly on Pinterest and all that good stuff. So if you try this recipe or make something similar, or even if you have any tips of, of different ways that I can change things up in it a little bit, please feel free to share that. I know we're all pretty much housebound lately and trying to keep busy and find new recipes and things that we like and things that make us happy. This recipe makes me happy. What are you guys cooking? What do you love to eat? Let me know down below and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.